So the first event that happens is a transient wave of the SRY expression. So as I talked about the SRY gene, it is one of the most important genes that is important for test this determination. And so there is a transient wave of SRY uh, expression in the undifferentiated gonad. Now first we will talk about testis differentiation because again it has a lot of important factors and a lot of questions that could go along with this. So the first and the most significant event in testis determination that happens at 42 days post conception as I said 42 is that number beyond which the gonad now does not remain bipotential and it takes one of the two turns either into the testis or the ovary. So the first event that happens is a transient wave of the SRY expression. So as I talked about the SRY gene, it is one of the most important genes that is important for test this determination. And so there is a transient wave of SRY uh, expression in the undifferentiated gonad which sets off the process in the direction of testicular de uh, determination, right. So the peak SRY expression happens on day 44 at which testicular cords start to appear. Now, low level SRY expression is seen in Sertoli cells from day 52 onwards and persists into adulthood. Usually, uh, the production starts to wane, but it low level expression can be seen in the Sertoli cells right into adulthood. Right. So, uh, this is a chart which is going to show you how the de testicular differentiation occurs. So, you have these N5A1 plus progenitor cells which differentiate into the pre-Sertoli cells and the Sertoli cells and you have the interstitial progenitors which then differentiate into the fetal Leydig cells, right. So the first you have the proliferation of the NR5A1, SF1 positive somatic cells, right. So you need to, you can just remember this NR5A1, SF1 positive somatic cells. Now this results in the increase in this uh, pre-Sertoli cell precursors. So uh, the Sertoli cell production happens a little bit before the uh, development of the Leydig cells. So that's an important thing that you need to remember. So pre-Sertoli cell precursors followed by Sertoli cell differentiation. Then the primitive Sertoli cells coalesce with the peritubular myoid cells which are nothing but flat smooth muscle cells. And then they prom from the primary sex cords, right? Now, the primitive seminiferous cords are formed from the primary sex cords around 7 weeks post conception. And then there is reorganization of the gonadal vasculature, right? So, this is what happens. These are the first few events that happen during testicular development. So, first you have a population of cells which is NR5A positive and they start to proliferate. Then there is a pre increase in the pre sertoli cell precursors and sertoli cell differentiation. Then those merge with the peritubular myoid cells from the primitive uh, primary sex cords. Now these form the primitive seminiferous cords around 7 weeks and then there is a reorganization of the gonadal vasculature, right. So this is how the uh, initial development happens and as I said, this is all triggered off by the initial expression of um, SRY gene which peaks around 44 days post conception. Right. Now, there is discrete coelomic vessel proliferation, restriction of the endothelial cells to the interstitial space between the sex cords and increased branching of the blood vessels that happens as I said, follow up of the gonadal vasculature development and then the fetal Leydig cell population differentiates. Now, this happens from the interstitium of the bipotential gonad which is supported by the NR5A1 and the SF1 factors. It is occurs following the loss of the TCF21 and the NR2F2, the coop TF1 from the interstitial progenitor cells. So this may not be that important. I have not seen this in that many uh, questions. So you know, need to know that it is supported by NR5A1 and SF1 and it is also supported by the loss of certain factors, right. Now other important um, transcription factors that are required the desert hedgehog, the ARX uh, gene, the MAMLD1 gene, right. So you just need to go through these and have a sense that these factors are important in um, testicular development so that in case it's there a question where you have to rule out, uh, you know that these are related with the testis differentiation, right. So this is a very nice picture uh, where uh, they are representing the development of the bipotential gonad in the female and the male. So I'd like you to concentrate on the right half of this image. So as you can see the bipotential gonad, if you have an XY chromosomal component, there are factors which are involved, so the WT1, the GATA5 and the ZFPM2 factors. 
these are also important in the expression of the SRY gene. Now, in the cells which have this NR5A1, the SRY results in promotion of the SOX9, which I already talked about. So, SRY increases the SOX9 expression. Now, SOX9 inhibits female or the ovarian development factors. That is, the FOX L2 and beta catenin are uh, ovarian uh, development factors which are inhibited by SOX9. And SNOX, SOX9 stimulates the male specific genes, increases FGF9, FGFR2 and the PTGD, uh, P PTGDS uh, gene. So, these are all the things which are increased by SOX9. Now, NR5A and the SRY act as this uh, testicular, um, you know, it's a promoting factor which increases the uh, SOX9 expression. Now, once SOX9 is expressed, it acts as an auto promoter and it promotes its own uh, um, further transcription, right? So, this results in the development of your adult testis. So, it's nice to remember all the important transcription factors are mentioned in this uh, picture. So, if you look at it quickly before an exam, you'll remember which factors because it can come, I've seen it coming in exams that which factors are required for testicular development and which are not required for testicular development. So, this will help you with that. I have some more slides about that as well. So, we will come to that later. Now, following that the subsequent testicular development in the second and the third trimesters, there are distinct morphological changes. There is a reduction in the fetal Leydig cell number, elongation and coiling of the seminiferous tubules. There is no further development of germ cells at this time. We will talk about where the germ cells come from in the next slides. Now, seminiferous tubules do not canalize until later on in childhood. So, you have blind uh, you know, tubes without any uh, canalization till uh, childhood. And an important disease that is the testicular regression syndrome or the vanishing testis syndrome, it occurs as a late fetal event, right? So, the testis is initially active. And there's adequate androgenization and no Mullerian structure formation. And this, this is because there is normal testicular function in the early gestation, right? So, testicular regression usually happens as a late fetal event. And in this, for some unknown reasons, there is a damage and the absence of the testis uh, later on in the fetal development. 